Hello friends and fellow bakers, it's Chef Tom from ChefInstructorTom.com. Welcome back to the channel, I do appreciate you stopping by today. Uh, and I'm really happy that we're going to spend a little time together with a quick tip today. Today's quick tip is about pans, if you haven't figured out all the pans and utensils I have in front of me. Now I know it's not the most ex exciting subject you'll ever encounter in the kitchen, but I think by the end of our quick tip today, you will see some things that maybe you want to add to your collection, things that you want to reutilize that maybe you haven't used in a long time in your collection of pots and pans. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the cast iron, uh, which I'm a big fan of right now. We'll talk about the stovetop stainless steel saute, uh, different pans that uh, you can make uh, jellies and jams in. Uh, we have a full array of uh, loaf pans. I've got my little loaf pans, full-size loaf pans, and even uh, a Pullman pan with a top. We'll talk more about that. Uh, baking pans, uh, things like quarter sheets, half sheets, uh, jelly rolls. We'll also talk about the pie pan, the cake pan, and also, and that, these don't really qualify as pans, but things I use to proof and ferment my bread in. So uh, I think you're going to find this kind of interesting. Uh, let's have a look. Well, let's first talk about the uh, sheet pans. And what you're looking for in a sheet pan is something that's really quite unbendable, uh, quite sturdy. Uh, you can tell that this has really got a nice edge to it. You want to look for kind of a rolled edge there. Uh, this is a quarter sheet. And I also got sill pads to go with each one of these guys. So that fits in there nicely. Good for baking on. Uh, these are for Williams Sonoma. And you're going to spend a little bit of money for a good pan. But I got to say, it's so, so worth it. Um, some of my favorites, though, this is another, um, this is a half sheet and a quarter sheet. And that way you can compare the two together. Um, let me take the sill pad out there so you can see it easier. Quarter sheet and half sheet. Most home ovens won't take a full sheet, but a full sheet would be twice as big as a half sheet. Uh, I got to say, these are two of my favorites, though, too. And I love the black pans because what they do is they reflect heat really, really well. And this is what they call a jelly roll pan. If you look at it, it's slightly different shape than the, uh, the quarter sheet. Awesome pan. And it's great for doing uh, chicken breasts in if you want. But uh, again, good for baking. And it's good for a small jelly roll cake as well. But again, even, even something like this, I think this is from Sir La Tab, and it is very unbendable. The, the thing that bums me out, though, is they don't make these black ones anymore. These are my favorites. Now, this one is a little more flimsy, as you might see. It's just a baking sheet. Uh, it's very, very uh, thin, uh, but it's good for doing croissants or cookies on. As you can see, it's pretty well beat up, but it does serve the purpose. It is an excellent pan. I would recommend getting a few of these pans, and I have probably two or three of each of these pans. Uh, highly recommended, but the main thing is to get a sturdy one. Let's move on to the stovetop pans, and I have just a few here, not a lot, uh, and I do have some other ones. Uh, what I realized, though, was I'm missing an 8-inch uh, saute pan. I end up using my 10-inch uh, uh, saute probably the most. Uh, a few years back, my mother-in-law, thank you so much, Sherry, uh, gave us all nice sets of pans and all from Allclad. And if you got, I don't know if you can see Allclad there, but that is, is the brand to get. If you're thinking about getting some new pans, uh, either start with just one, you know, one pan, just a simple pan like this or a saute, but get Allclad because that is going to be the brand you want to find. Um, it is a little more expensive, but uh, we got these probably 15 years ago. So they last, they are easily cleanable. They, this thing has been through the war and you wouldn't even know it. Uh, this is, like I said, my, my favorite saute pan. I also use a satois. This is nice for making uh, sauces or doing meat in. Uh, and what's nice also about these pans, each one of these is uh, stainless steel on the outside, but it has a copper core in the bottom, in the pan, bottom of the pan. Um, and what this does is it heats up and it keeps the heat really nicely as well. This is good for doing pasta in. Uh, and I've also got a steamer uh, basket, which I use quite a bit too, with, the, with the, uh, this pan right here. So highly recommended. Uh, just get a few. You don't need a lot. Don't overcrowd your kitchen with a lot of pans that you're never going to use. And as far as tops go, I only have a couple of tops. Uh, but I do use, I very rarely use a top, but if I need to, I have a little product I'll show you in a second uh, that I can use for my top. It's real simple. 
Next up are the bowls that I use like every single day. And I've got uh, a lot of them about the same size. These are kind of similar size here. These are pretty much small and large. This one has a flat bottom, so it's nice for making salad dressing in. Uh, but I use these every single day. They, first of all, they're light. They are easily cleanable. Uh, they can go in the dishwasher, but I find that I wash them by hand, just so I can go back into circulation a lot quicker. Um, I use these for mixing bread. Um, and I don't understand why people use glass bowls at all. These are so much lighter, way easier to clean. Uh, they're just, a, I think it's a better way to go. So if you're thinking about getting some stainless steel bowls, just get, you know, maybe two small ones uh, just to get started. You can always get larger and smaller sizes, but I find that I don't use the big giant ones like ever. I mean, I have one up in the cabinet, but I never use it. Also, little tiny ones, I don't find I use that much either. So kind of this medium size, sort of 8 to 10 inch size is pretty much the way to go. Think about it. Stainless steel is the way to go. Next is all the other pans I use from time to time. I don't use these every single day. Uh, and as we saw last week, we saw some lovely muffin pans. As you see here, I have three different sizes, small, medium, and extra large. And a little bit of pan spray and the muffins pop right out, or you can use muffin cups. Uh, these guys I've had for years and years. This one I especially like. This is uh, from KitchenAid, I think. But again, it is sturdy beyond belief. I wish they could all be that sturdy. Uh, we also have uh, some baking pans, good for uh, different size cakes. This is 13 by 9. This is a standard size pan. Sur la table, very, very sturdy, not bendable at all. Uh, this is another KitchenAid pan, and I cannot find any more like this. This is an 8 by 8. You might see a 9 by 9, typical. And this, most people might call this a brownie pan. This is a classic pan to have in the kitchen. Uh, a good square pan is always a good place to start. Then you've got loaf pans, and the loaf pans are interesting. Um, I love doing small loaves of brioche or like a little braided uh, babka, little little piece like that. Great for giving away to friends and family, uh, and it's just a, it's a good sturdy pan. This is Chicago Metallic. Not the greatest pan in, all, in the world, but again, it does hold its heat pretty well. This is standard uh, 5x9 pan. This is a loaf pan that you might get a loaf of bread in. Again, as you've seen maybe uh, me doing bread, I don't do a lot of loaf pan breads. Um, but except for maybe just a brioche or maybe some challah or um, just some simple sandwich bread. This is another cool bread pan that I use a lot. And this one, if you'll notice too, it has little holes in the bottom there. If you can see, it has holes in the bottom because it's going to let some steam out. And this is what we call a Pullman pan. And a Pullman pan comes with a top to slide on top. The bread proofs inside and what you get is a perfectly square loaf of bread with brown on all sides of the crust. It is a classic old-fashioned pan. You see I don't have a big one uh, because we don't do that much bread in it but it is awesome and I highly recommend this one. Uh, pie tins. You might say okay well pie tins couldn't I just use the aluminum the, the kind that comes in the grocery store? You could. But again, not to, I, I'm getting no compensation from William Snow at all. But again, their pans are very, very sturdy, very high quality. And I, I don't do pie that often. But when I do, it's going to be in this kind of pan. And I have two because I usually at Christmas, I do a, a pumpkin and a pecan pie. Maybe even a third pie I might do as an apple pie now and then too. Uh, but get yourself a good quality pie pan and I think it'll last you a long time. And then the last pans are the cake pans. And I guess because I don't do a lot of cake, these are all the pans I need. These are simple pans. And I also don't use a springform pan. Springform pans for me are kind of a non-starter. They're not really super cleanable. Uh, they end up falling apart. That buckle part kind of falls apart. Um, so I do all my cakes in pans like this. This is a uh, standard nine inch home cake pan. Uh, you might see them in different sizes. If you want to get more into cake pans, that's a whole nother story altogether. And there's lots of different cake pans you can get to. So let's talk cast iron. Now, I have to be honest with you, I did not grow up using cast iron. That was not part of our uh, normal repertoire in our kitchen at home when I was a kid. Uh, it wasn't until recently that I got myself uh, a lodge, uh, just a cast iron uh, saute pan. This is just an eight inch pan. 
Uh, real nice, simple little pan. But once you get it seasoned up, this is a terrific nonstick surface, which is why you will not be seeing any nonstick pans on this little quick tip today at all. Uh, I don't use nonstick pans anymore. Uh, what I use is cast iron or stainless steel. Both are very, very nonstick if you use them properly. We'll do another quick tip on that in the near future. Uh, and then I got this guy. This is a little smaller one. This is good for doing some eggs or something like that. It'd be nice. And then uh, this is where it really comes in for bread making is the uh, Lodge cast iron Dutch oven. And what I wanted one was one deep enough so I could get in there with a loaf of bread. Unfortunately, you have to do one loaf at a time, uh, unless you have more than one, more than one cast iron uh, Dutch oven. And then the top goes on like so. And what you do is you bake with the top on for a few minutes and then bake it and you get a really nice crispy crust. And then you take the top off and finish baking that. Now cast iron, if you handle it properly and you gotta, you gotta season it with oil, you've gotta take good care of it so it doesn't oxidize or rust. It is a little bit of work, but I gotta say, it is really fun to cook with for one, but also uh, it is real easy once you get going. Just a little bit of maintenance and you're on your way. I do have one other kind of unusual pan here, and this is a pan I use in my uni pizza oven, and which is nice because we could do steaks and chops in here, hamburgers, uh, we've done some seafood, some scallops, um, salmon steaks, that kind of thing in here. And what is nice is you can get this heated up to about 900 degrees, and it is a terrific way to make a steak. If you not get like a nice char crust on your steak and nice rare interior, awesome. And because this gets so hot, it comes with this little handle right here. And so you retrieve it from the oven like so. The handle stays cool and you don't have to worry about it. And then it goes on this, this wooden plank. As you can see, it's got, it got some serious work out there in the uh, last year uh, because we were using this pan a lot. So cast iron, I got to make a case for it. It's really fun to play with and I think you're going to enjoy working with it. It's a good way to go. Think about it. And then lastly, we'll talk about uh, things that we used to, uh, to proof bread in. And I love these guys. I got these two for $5 at the grocery store. And I think it was even like the store brand or something like that. But what's nice is I can put pizza rounds in there and put them out like this. And they, they shut really nice and tight. Well, they used to. There we go. <laughs> they shut really nice and tight. These go perfectly in the refrigerator. They also sit perfectly on the countertop when you are proofing your pizza, just pizza dough, just before you're gonna bake it too. So highly recommended to get something like this. They, there are some very expensive ones you can get, very professional looking ones. Two for five, I kind of dug. That kind of appealed to me right away. And then this is just a uh, kind of what you might call, I don't know, maybe like a three quart kind of thing where it's plastic, uh, it's dishwasher safe, but it is, again, perfect for proofing maybe about a kilo of dough. The top goes on nice and securely, and this goes perfectly in the back of the fridge or anywhere you need it to go. It's also good if you're going to uh, ferment on top of the countertop as well. Um, it's good if you're also, if you're doing stretch and folds, you're stretching the dough over on itself. Highly recommended. We also have uh, some tops here, too, and you say, well, wait a minute, aren't those pizza pans? They are pizza pans. In fact, these are nice thin pizza tops, pizza pans you can use as tops on your pans. So if you ever want to use these guys for on top of your satois or your, your uh, saute pan, they work great. They're good on tops of the bowls to keep things from getting inside your bowl when you're fermenting your bread. Uh, these were, I think, three for 10. So definitely think about those guys. And then also, we also have some tops for the stainless steel. This is for the all clad. And that goes in the uh, small uh, saute pan or, or saucepan, I should say. And then this is kind of just an all-purpose top that I use for a lot of different things, both for the saute and the satois. So, and this one's nice and heavy duty as well. All of these retain the heat well. Hello, ding, ding. Uh, they retain the heat well, and I think you're going to find that they work the best with that kind of all-clad pan. Well, I hope you liked our little overview of my little pan collection. Uh, and it's not actually a very little pan collection. It's a pretty large pan collection. Uh, keep in mind, I've been cooking for 40 years and I will have acquired some more pans than maybe you have. 
Uh, maybe you have way more pans than I do too. Uh, but I was going to say, if you can think about a pan that you want to get, um, it, think about the ones I've shown you here today. I think there's a lot of fun things you can do uh, when you're cooking and having the right equipment can make a big, big difference in the way you enjoy cooking and the way that your food comes out ultimately. Um, th this is a jumping off spot. Figure out what pans you really, really need and get rid of the ones you don't because I'm sure there are some in your collection that you don't need. Get rid of them. Don't keep any pans in your collection that you never use. They're not sacred, they're just metal. Well, be sure to like the video and subscribe if you like my channel, I hope you do. I'll see you next week on ChefInstructorTom.com and right back here at the channel. Thanks for watching. Happy baking.